together. Talking about the use of symbols in African Christianity, African traditional religion, and Islam. What here is saying is, what are some of those major dominant symbols that are found in African Christianity, Haiti, Arab, and Islam, and what are their symbolic interpretations? I was able to bring out, among others, a few of them here, which I will uh, briefly explain. Of course, in our previous uh, discussions, I had looked at them, but let me look at them briefly so that we can now round off. One here is the candle. The candle is associated with the spirit, which serves as a ritual process to enhance the visitation of the spirit to ward off evil, ward off evil spirits, and also invite the spirit of the divine. In some churches, in some prayer houses, before they commence their prayers, they will light the candles and pray. They will tell you to kneel down and then use the candle to just round you off and pray, believing that with the candle or the candles, the spirits are invited to come and take part in whatever spiritual prayers or spiritual cleansing they are doing. We have the palm fronts, which symbolizes spiritual salt or salt, the palm front. The, the, the fresh part of the palm front in the grid is called omongo. That's fresh palm. Anywhere you see it, they see it as a salt. So stay away so that the salt doesn't fall on you. Like I told us in our, first, in our earlier classes, I, I said, once the palm front is kept anywhere, it means stay away. You don't go there, it's danger. But in some areas, they see it as a means of decoration. That is why we say in some cultures, one cultures, this means another cultures also. But we embellish here in some areas, we don't embellish them. Then we have this spiritual water, which is for purification and for chasing away malevolent spirits. We have, you know, the water is sprinkled. Some people call it the holy water. They give you, you go to your shop, you pray, you sprinkle it. Every evil day, I will run away. Then you invite the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit to come and take over. Then we have the water too, which also carries important, significant, significant such as washing away of evil and invitation of Holy Spirit, such as the baptism, as in the case of Jesus when he was baptized. The Bible says the heavens were opened, and the Spirit of God came using the shape of a dove. So the water also separates you from evil and welcomes you into the realm of the spirits. Some areas they will take, take you to one ocean and pray for you. Once they are done with the prayers, they will now pull you out of the water. Once you are pulled out of the water, they will say all things have passed away. Then you are now a new person with a new spiritual water that is being sprinkled or used to cleanse you. Then we have the white clothes by African instituted churches. This one indicates, you know, it is purity and chastity of the body and mind. It symbolizes goodness, purity, and good life for Christ. Then we have the red color, which symbolizes the blood of Jesus, by which members are made clean. The red is the blood of Jesus Christ and all that. Then we have the bread and wine for the Orthodox churches during Holy Communion. The bread is a symbol of the body of Christ, while the wine is a symbol of the blood of Christ. They will tell you, if any is holy, let them come and take. If any is not, go home and then repent. Then we have the, the woman's menstrual flow, which is a sign of uncleanness. In some areas, people who are you know, having their menstrual flow are forbidden from you know, cooking food. That's why in some areas, some titled men don't eat publicly. Some men who are titled, some chiefs don't eat food in public because they don't know the source of the food. They believe that if a, a woman who is having her menstrual flow cooks food and they eat that thing, they are also unclean because of the way they live their lives. Then we have the cross, the Christian cross, which symbolizes the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the redeeming benefits of his passion and death. It is in their car, it is there, they wear it on, on, on their neck, believing that when anything happens, that chaplet will make them to you know, be safe or be taken away from danger. Like I said, the bread and wine during Holy Communion are symbols of the blood and body of Jesus Christ, which when it helps us to come in contact and communion with the mystical powers and union with Christ. Then we have the Ogolo, symbolic scepter, the traditional 
symbol of authority. The whole logo to every uh, tradition, tradition is, is like the Bible. In fact, it is the oracle of the gospel. Anywhere you see your work or your first symbol, it means that the ancestors are there, the spirits are there. They hit it on the floor while invoking the spirits. In some areas, you see them with four times, indicating the former market days, or again, area, and so on and so forth. Even the color lots, if they bring a, a loaf of, of color lots with four, four faces, they say, Oh, this one is a good one. It represents the former market days, or again, area. Anyone that is shut up that will be thrown away. Don't touch it. These, these things, therefore, when it is struck or stricken, when they hit it on the, on the ground, they awakens the powers of the spirits and ancestors as the guarantors of truth and justice. The first symbolizes the link between the living and the dead. What is the one of thunder and lightning? It's symbolized by iron bar with a spiritual warfare. In most equal communities, too, the presence of bees around the environment shows that Amadio is at work. And lastly, we have the ex the Ali, the earth goddess. Very, very key and fundamental to every African. The ex, like I told us earlier, is the above of the spirit. It is the womb that takes everybody. It is the producer of what we eat. The earth, in some areas, is, is perceived in feminine terms, while the sky is perceived in, in a masculine time. That's why when the rain falls, they say, the man, which is the earth, I mean the, the sky, is dropping the semen to fertilize the earth. So the rainfall acts as, you know, it's a symbol of semen, which comes from the man to the woman for fertility to take place. So without being told, without the water, no food can produce. Without the earth, nobody can build, can eat. And without the sky too, there, there will be no water. So these ones, among other things, are a few of the examples I've written out here. They are symbolic interpretations. I think with this, we will stop here.